Living is one of the most dangerous things you can do, and ultimately, 100% of the time, it will result in your demise. Is that the best way to start off a video? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. But for real, however, humans are largely unlucky and also pretty violent. It's not really our fault. Animals in general share the same traits as us and are violent themselves, but it's more of just the name of the game concerning survival on this planet. However, through time, many people have lost limbs or sections of their bodies from things like wars, car accidents, tiger attacks like in that show Tiger King, which if you haven't seen it, Carol definitely 100% fed her husband to the tigers without a doubt. But with these limbs lost, we actually started to learn about the body's adaptations and seemingly maladaptation to these lost limbs and idle neurons. One such experience is known as the phantom limb. So today we'll be discussing what exactly it is and also some of the strange ways in which a few have overcome it, which continues to kind of perplex humanity about the actual functioning of our own brains. When you lose a limb to anything, it's a fairly traumatic event for the body. Connections are severed, blood supply is altered, muscle use is lost, and the whole body is fairly adaptive in this time period, but issues can still arise from this loss. And it's these issues that began to crop up that led doctors and surgeons to further their studies on these people who still reported that they could either feel their limb or were still suffering from pain. Phantom limb syndrome was first described in 1552 by a French surgeon, Ambriose Perry, who operated on wounded soldiers and wrote about patients who complained of pain in the amputated limbs. The same syndrome was later observed and noted by French scientist, mathematician, and philosopher René Descartes, German physician Aaron Lemose, Scottish anatomist Sir Charles Bell, and American physician Silius Ware Mitchell, who tended to wounded soldiers in Philadelphia during the American Civil War. Scottish physician William Porterfield wrote a first-hand account of phantom limb syndrome in the 18th century, following the amputation of one of his legs. He was the first person considered sensory perception as the underlying phenomenon of this syndrome. In the 1990s, researchers found neuroplasticity, the ability of neurons in the brain to modify their connections and behavior, could explain the phenomenon that had been observed in association with phantom limb syndrome. Phantom limb pain was found to actually be explained specifically by MAP expansion neuroplasticity, cortical reorganization, in which local brain regions, each dedicated to performing one type of function and reflected in the cerebral cortex as MAPs, can acquire areas of unused phantom map. So what exactly do these maps mean? Well, currently in our brain, humans have a general idea of what we look like and what in general others look like, but specifically concerning just the individual themselves, the nerves run to the brain and specific areas of the brain are responsible for specific portions of the body. When someone touches your arm or leg, that runs to a certain portion of the brain every time to report that you are in fact being touched. When you lose that limb, these specific areas go dormant, so to speak. And this is where the issues actually stem from. The dormancy is not really looked favorably upon any type of organ and any type of function really concerning life. To be dormant and unused is a monumental waste. Because of this, our brains will take these areas no longer being used and then remap their purposes. And these purposes are typically for other parts of the body. And this is where the disconnect comes from. Let's say you lose an arm, right? Well, over time, your brain becomes sort of like aware that a huge section isn't properly being utilized and goes, all right, bro, vacation's over. You are now a part of the left ear lobe and right cheek. These neural connections form and suddenly begin lighting up whenever these areas are touched. However, not all parts of the dormant area are utilized during this process. Because of this, when these areas light up and are activated, they have a tendency to possibly activate unchanged neurons around them. When this happens, these leftover arm segment neurons also become activated. For them, the brain interprets this as, oh hey, your arm is back. And they can quite literally feel everything your arm or hands would feel despite it being gone. So you're sitting there and you could probably start to gather why this would completely freak people out, more so back in the day when they had no clue what was actually happening. To them, the limb had already crossed over the threshold of death and yet they could still feel it. Thus, the phantom limb was born. With the brain remapping, however, it's not always just able to feel the missing limb, but sometimes it's much worse than that. And to understand this, let's take a trip down something that I suffer with, the explanation of tinnitus. Tinnitus, not to be confused with tendinitis, which is inflammation of your tendons. It's basically when you have an overloading of 
noise within your ears, such as like too loud of a sound, or you have like a degenerative disorder, but within the ears exist these hair cells that move and sway due to vibrations. These hairs are extremely sensitive and can be damaged quite easily. They never grow back, and once they're gone, they're gone forever. However, when they do bite the dust, they are no longer able to report to the brain that sound is incoming. And here is the horrifying fate of my own hearing that is actually pretty freaking annoying. With no reports coming in, the brain sits there and decides a really high-pitched E noise is preferable. Some people hear whooshing, some people hear thumping noises. To me, it's the high-pitched E noise. In fact, to actually make my point, Nick, will you play like three seconds of a tinnitus noise for me real quick? So yeah, you hear that? That's me, all day, every day, living the dream. Anyhow, because of the lack of information, the brain figures that there must be some noise there, you just can't hear it, so it makes it up. Other portions of the brain then get involved to try to ignore this because it finds it pretty annoying. Well, this is what happens with the phantom limb syndrome as well. When the peripheral nervous system can no longer report incoming sensory information from the missing limb, the brain assumes that something is wrong, and I mean, I guess it is sort of correct, something is wrong. It's never a great thing when your brain assumes that anything has gone wrong within your body, though. And the reason for this is because it will always fall back on its most basic interpretation, which is pain. Pain in the phantom limb is almost always too common. Many people can still feel the pain of pins and needles from their missing hand or foot and anything that is no longer attached. It's because the brain wants to fix why it can no longer feel the limb, but there's no way to actually remedy the problem. So it continues to suffer and by association with your own brain, you continue to suffer. Another absolutely abhorrent sensation others may feel, which is also pretty bad, is one that you might not be thinking of right now, but I'm about to make you think of it. So you're sitting there, just chilling out. Take a second to really feel your body. Something itches, doesn't it? And if it didn't, it does now. It may have to do with parasites on your skin or possibly dryness, but itching is also somewhat social if you didn't know. Regardless, odds are that you have just scratched something or you're just about to. Hopefully it's an arm or a leg or a nose. Now imagine you didn't actually have those there. They're gone, but it still itches. What do you do? Well, you deal with the sensation of itching for the rest of your life with very few ways how to fix it. And in some people's phantom limbs, for some reason, the sensation of intense itch can be felt permanently or from time to time. And honestly, I'm not actually sure which is worse, pain or itching. What do you think? There are a few ways in which it can be helped to alleviate pain or itch. Most have to do with certain medications being administered like benzodiazepines, antidepressants, antipsychotics, and anticonvulsants, all of which go to the source and impact the brain and its operation but most of these will have side effects. In other cases, hypnosis has been used to some degree of effectiveness, and shock therapy has also been making its rounds, which is applying an electrical shock through the brain of a person, overloading the neurons to bring them out of their repeating patterns. But there is one specific particular method I find most strange. This involves setting up a mirror to reflect the limb as if it were there. So like, just for instance, say your left arm was removed, but your right arm was still there. So you have them sitting out in front of you, this arm's gone, this arm's still there. You have a mirror in the middle and you're looking at it. You're looking at your right arm, but your brain actually thinks it's your left arm, even though it's gone. So this reflection actually tricks your brain into thinking that the limb has returned. And in some instances, upon viewing the reflected limb, people were able to scratch that itch that had been plaguing them, or the brain visually inspects the limb and notices that nothing is actually wrong and the pain signals have stopped. So this also continues to show the interconnectedness of the brain, seeing as the optic nerve is able to convince portions of the brain that the limb is back, which again, stops the pain signals and stops the itch. But overall, most of these methods really involve the eyes or medications sort of going and fixing the issue. Not all of these are considered to be 100% effective, and there are still those out there who do not actually have some relief for these problems. And on that downer note, I would like to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video over the phantom limb syndrome. If you did, leaving a like would be great, and subbing is also a great way to sort of like keep up with the channel as it continues to grow. I have actually passed 10,000 subscribers, I think like last week or something, so I really am happy to see that you guys are enjoying the channel this much, and I hope you will continue to kind of enjoy it in the future. 
Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.